Tom Downey here for Bengals Breakdown by Chat Sports. Bengals training camp is still roughly a month away. It's a little bit more than that. But we're going to break down some of the top storylines to watch at Bengals camp from potential moves, extensions, players themselves, and a whole lot more. Before we get going, though, we need you guys to share today's video. We're going to try to continue to grow our new Bengals channel, but we need your help. Share today's video on Facebook. Help it get in front of new people. That way they can subscribe and join us for more free Bengals video. It's simple. Click the share button. Hit the Facebook icon. You can edit your message if you want. And then click post to Facebook. First up on the Bengals storylines to watch. How about some Charlie Jones hype? You could also mix in Andre Yoshivas if you want to go that route as well. But there's been plenty of buzz around the Bengals young wide receiver, the rookie out of Purdue. Here's what the wide receivers coach, Troy Walters, said about Charlie Jones. He's gotten better every day. He loves football, and he's here in the facility as much as uh, or in the facility as I am leaving the office. Excuse me. It just shows you how much he wants it. I like Charlie Jones a lot. He was a fourth-round pick out of Purdue. I had a fourth-round grade on him. He was one of my favorite day three prospects. He's not the biggest guy. He's not the straight line speed fastest guy, but he's a very gifted athlete overall. I think he's going to be a very successful football player. You're talking about somebody who, uh, for whatever reason, didn't get much of a chance in the past. He was at Buffalo and then ends up transferring, and then he goes a different route. He goes to Iowa, then he ends up at Purdue, ends up hitting a fantastic uh, success there alongside quarterback Aiden O'Connell. Does offer 4-4-3 four, four, speed, so might not be a 4-3 guy, despite being a bit smaller. He's only 175. That's still pretty impressive overall. USA Today also hyping up Charlie Jones. Now, not hard to see why. Jones was a stunning athlete in college, and he's primed to compete heavily for a return job on special teams, all while possibly re looking like the long-term replacement for Tyler Boyd. Now, I think Tyler Boyd's still going to be your wide receiver three this year. I think Jones will be your punt returner, and next year Jones will step into the slot role that Boyd currently occupies. Although, it would be a nice problem to have if the Charlie Jones hype grows so strong that the Bengals would be able to feasibly move on from Boyd. They would save money, as we've discussed in the past on the channel, $8.9 million if they were to move on from Tyler Boyd. But Boyd has said the Bengals told him he's going to stick around. I am reminded of the comments from Duke Tobin about, hey, you know, just because we might have a player next year, doesn't want to give up on them now because they're a good player. We're trying to win football games. I think Boyd falls into that category in particular. But when it's all said, let's say, let's say the end of the season, assuming everyone's healthy and playing well, can Charlie Jones steal that wide receiver three role from Tyler Boyd? Who will it be? TB for Tyler Boyd. CJ for Charlie Jones. It is today's pinned comment. So if an ad break comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know. Next up, how about the first round pick, right? Miles Murphy. Is he going to be a legit piece even in year one for this Bengals team? Here's what ESPN wrote, breaking down all the first round picks, knowing that, hey, you haven't seen Murphy in pads, really. The combination of size and speed that Murphy displayed at his Clemson Pro Day has been evident during off-season workouts. He's looked ex as explosive as advertised in the team's positional drills. Murphy's reps have been predominantly been with the backups, but the Bengals have, a, ha have had a handful of seven-on-seven -seven reps during mandatory minicamp. Since then, he wants Murphy to be on the field for key pass rush situations as the Bengals try to increase their pressure rate. The Bengals have some good pass rushers. Trey Hendrickson, Sam Hubbard has shown promise for him. Joseph Asai has shown ability. Uh, DJ Reader can push the pocket. I am a big fan of BJ Hill. But if Murphy can unlock that raw physical ability in a situational pass rush role, that would lead to more sacks. That's kind of the one thing the Bengals defense would like, I think, to get the best boost at is their sack numbers, is their pressure numbers. That's why they drafted Murphy in the first round. I'm excited about what he'll be able to do this year and beyond, but we haven't seen him in pads yet. We'll finally see that at training camp. Now, if you want just all of the latest Bengals news, rumors, and more, hit that sub button right now. More free Bengals videos when you subscribe right now. Next up is this young and pretty overhauled secondary, especially on the back end. 
The safety room in particular is very different. Daxton Hill is now the starter. Jesse Bates is in Atlanta. Von Bell got paid by another NFC South team, the Panthers. Nick Scott comes aboard. Jordan Battle has shown promise in a very small role early on, small sample, I, I should say, uh, at OTAs and at minicamp. But Dax Hill was this team's first-round pick last year. He was always supposed to be the Jesse Bates replacement. The Bengals spent a first-round pick on a guy that they knew wasn't going to play a lot in year one because he was going to be a massively critical part to what they do on defense in year two. And now it is time for Daxton Hill to be that guy, to emerge as the true Jesse Bates replacement and lead that safety room while the cornerback room adds some more young talent. DJ Turner among them, but maybe don't sleep on DJ Ivy. Bengals.com hyping him up a little bit. Here's a guy to watch in training camp, they write. Seventh round pick, DJ Ivy, the, the University of Miami corner. They're really high on this guy because of his size. He's 6'1", 192, and his 4'4 speed. And Thursday, back referring to Thursday's minicamp, he sent a warning to camp when he had an interception in the red zone. I feel much better about this Bengals secondary group overall after minicamp and OTAs. Chidibe Wouzier should be good to go for week one. They're banking on Cam Taylor Britt year two breakout. Mike Hilton is still a stud at the nickel corner spot. The Bengals are high on Allen George. Sidney Jones has shown some flashes. They like DJ Ivy, and they spent a second rounder on DJ Turner. So maybe Ivy's goal is just to make the roster since he's a seventh round pick after all. But the depth has me feeling a little bit better about this secondary as the team gets ready to enter a critical year because they're trying to win Super Bowls with Joe Burrow. So what do you think about the secondary as a unit? What is your confidence level in this group as we sit right now? Scale it for me from 1 to 10. You should know how scales work, right? 1 is on the low end, 10 is on the high end. Maybe it's somewhere in between, but go ahead and vote for me in the comments. Let's go back to the offense here. How about Irv Smith? Can he truly become a true tight end one? He has shown flashes at times over the course of his NFL career, mostly, or entirely, I should say, with the Minnesota Vikings. He signed a one-year deal, a cheap contract, Bengals plugging him in with Hayden Hurst gone, and the expectation is he has a breakout year and then probably gets paid by somebody else next offseason. Here's what Drew Sample, his teammate at tight end, said. He's a really smart, savvy player. You don't, it, you know, we don't have a lot of new, new guys on offense, but he's picked it up seamlessly as far as a lot of adjustments go. He's done a great job picking that stuff up. CJ Uzama, Hayden Hurst, they're great. For Irv, I think he might be the smoothest of those guys, getting in and out of his breaks. He's a very smooth route runner. He can get down the seam, makes a lot of cuts like receivers. All great players, like Irv, just brings his different spin to it. I'm excited about Irv Smith this year. I, I really am. Uh, he, this is a guy I liked a lot coming out of Alabama years ago. Injuries have sapped his chance to make a real impact in Minnesota. So if he can stay healthy, which, to be fair, is still a pretty sizable if, all things considered, there should be a chance for him to make some big-time splash plays as that seam stretch over the middle of the field. You've got Chase and Higgins and Boyd. You mix Irv Smith in there as a fourth option. Fifth option would include some of the backs, etc. He could have a really big impact and get favorable matchups nonstop in Cincinnati. Finally, contract negotiations. This one, not just for training camp, but ideally before. Maybe you get one done. The Bengals, of course, are focused in on Joe Burrow right now. And again, I have all the confidence in the world that deal will get done uh, before the start of the season ideally before the start of the regular season or before the start of training camp, but they're not the only one. T. Higgins is due for a new deal. Logan Wilson due for a new contract. DJ Reader as well. Now, right now, the Bengals have just under $15 million in salary cap space. An extension for any of those guys, in some cases like a DJ Reader, would actually probably bring down their cap hit in the short term while adding money off into the future. But the extensions, because those guys are still under contract this year, there wouldn't be a massive hit to the Bengals' salary cap this year. They they are able to fit everyone under the contract books. I do wonder how paying Jermaine Pratt would impact Logan Wilson. Could Tiggins be a franchise tag candidate? We'll wait and see. But once Burroughs' deal gets done, then the attention turns to Higgins, Wilson, and others.